Hi everyone, my name is Tohid. I'm a TA for your lab and since we have a lot of problems with the uh, analysis of data for tension test, uh, we decided to have a tutorial on how to use Excel for uh, analyzing this data. So first uh, we are going to talk about how we can use uh, Excel some quick notes and then we go ahead and do one of the examples uh, step by step so you guys can follow so first thing about uh, Excel is that how you can select a data you can simply click on one data and then you have you have selected it you can copy you can paste you can cut that data uh, with the same uh, short keys that you're using in in Windows or in Mac but uh, if you want to have like uh, more than one data you just press uh, the left click on your mouse and then drag down you can you can select these data uh, the problem is that when you're dealing with large number of data you need to select uh, select from that large number so this clicking and dragging or uh, is not really a good way to do it so what you can do is that you can click on the first data you can go ahead in this box name box and then write down the the number like for example you need uh, the sample from the sample in the fifth row to the sample on the 500th row okay you can write down the name there and then holding the shift pressing enter it will automatically select these data for you it will help you a lot of time because you're not going to scroll down to select your data and it helps a lot so uh, but there are some other important short keys here so for example uh, how can I go to the last uh, row of data in Windows you can click uh, you can hold control and then the down arrow you will go to the last row of your data if you want to go to the first row of your data again hold control and then up arrow will go to the first row of your data in Mac it's command down arrow command up arrow so they are they are handy things that you can do uh, another important thing is that like for example you want to jump from here to say row 275 how you can go there you just first type down the the column here and then 275 and then when you press the enter you'll automatically go to that direction it's really easy to use this one another important thing is that how you can find uh, one of the values that are in one of these cells in a big column you can do two things for finding a number in a column the first easy thing is using the find function here click on the find and then here say for example I want to find 100 275 in this column A when you click on the column and then when you press find you'll find 100 uh, 275 here for you it will go here uh, there are some options especially the time that you're working in formulas and stuff that you're going to work with formulas a lot in these labs here you need to change these ones from formulas to values because if you have formulas and then the formula is just giving you a number the find function cannot find that number for you so it needs to be a value here then again uh, let's go to the first row again I'm just trying to find 275 and then it's coming here that was the first way of doing it the second way is using the match function match function is a built-in function in Microsoft Excel uh, <coughs> so uh, as you can see it has uh, it has three inputs the first input is the lookup value which we had 275 the second input is where I have to where I have to find it 
then you will click on this column and then the last option is actually uh, saying that do you want the exact match or less than it or greater than it so if you put it here zero you will get the exact match if you put one any number less than one less than 275 it will find that number the first number actually and then minus one would be any number greater than that okay and then when I'm clicking this it will give you it will give you the row number of that number which was 275 and then when you go to row 275 you see that the value of that number is 275 as well so this is row 275 which has the value of 275 so two ways you can find a number in a huge actually among a huge number of data okay in a column Another interesting thing that you might need uh, in your data analysis is uh, how you can make a sequence of data. It's actually something very handy and something very powerful in Excel that you can use. For example, say I have, I want to make a sequence of data 1, 2, 3, 2, infinity. Okay, not to infinity, like to 100. Okay. When you type the first three ones and then you come here when the cursor of your mouse is is just changing from this big plus to a slim plus okay by dragging down by holding the left click and dragging down you can make a sequence of data here like this that easy so th this sequence of data doesn't need to be like that you can like one by one plus one by one you can have one three five so the difference between two successive numbers here is two okay and then when you go ahead it will find automatically find the relationship between the numbers and then just repeating that relationship for you like for example another sequence another example is 100 0 0.01 and then 0 0.02 and then you can go ahead and then by dragging data you can have it in a sequence uh, it's it, the sequence even uh, does not need to be numbers you can have uh, like Saturday let's have Saturday and then Sunday and then Monday and then see uh, and then it's just going on Monday Tuesday Wednesday Thursday or like uh, January February March and then when you drag it down it's just give you give you the months in a year or the days in a week or whatever okay so this is how you make a sequence of data in in Excel uh, <clears throat> another important thing is that how you can delete like one the values in one row okay you can just in a column you can just uh, select that column delete will just delete delete these numbers for you in the columns and in Mac you need to go select and go to to uh, I think it was edit and then from that you can uh, from that point you can just delete everything uh, another important thing is when you want to make a formula okay how you can f type a formula in Microsoft Excel okay for typing a formula you first click on one of these uh, cells like for example here click on one of these cells and then type down your formula like for example I want uh, my formula to add these two columns and then multiply by this column so I first want to add uh, column F and column G together and then multiply the result to the respective element in the column H 
So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to first click on column F, the first one, and then plus click on column G because I want to add both of them together. Okay, great. Uh, because I want to add both of them together, I need parentheses. Uh, and then multiply by column H. So that's it. So when you, the important thing is here. So when you have a formula, you can do the Dirac thing here as well. Okay. So it, what it's doing is that for every respective element in here, it's just adding up these two columns and then multiply the result with this one. Okay. So this is another important thing that you can, you, you will use this one a lot in your data analysis. And, <clears throat> and there is another important thing uh, is that when you have a huge number like this, we have, we have here uh, more than 1000 data, well less than 1000 data. And let's say we want to have a formula here. Okay, let's say we want to multiply each element of these element of these column by 100. Okay, so should I drag it all the way down, or is there another way that we can actually speed up our calculations? Well, of course there is another way. Let's say um, we want to go all the way through on this column A. So how we can choose? Uh, how we can actually choose a column here. We first uh, we first press shift and then I told you guys that control down arrow will go all the way down. Yeah? And then right now I've I have a uh, I have selected all of the empty cells in column B. So I need to fill them up with, with the formula that we typed. So we go here in the fill, we select select a series and then here autofill it will give you if it, if it give you it, it will actually fill every empty cell in column B with our formula. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> since uh, uh, since we didn't, uh, since we didn't have uh, any number after 900, and we select uh, the whole column here, so for the for the rest of these cells, it put zero in here and then calculated this. But uh, we can actually delete them, uh, or we can uh, we can do something better, which is uh, let's say for example we want to multiply this by ten, okay, and then here we want to go from row one to row uh, say nine hundred, okay. I'll I'll type here C nine hundred and then hold down the shift and then press enter. It will select the empty cells until the row 900, okay? And then I go to the fill, series, auto fill, and then it this one is just giving me uh, the values until the row 900. This is another handy thing that you could use, okay? Uh, there are two important things that you guys need to know about the formulas and stuff and uh, another important thing that I have seen a lot of you guys um, had problems with it was how you can you can plot something in Excel okay so let's say that we want to plot column K versus column L. Okay, so this is my X axis, this is my L, uh, this is my Y axis. 
when we select this data, let's uh, select this data, okay, and then go to the tab insert, and then from scatter, you choose scatter with smooth lines. When you're draw when you are plotting your stress versus strain, do not use uh, scatter with smooth lines and markers because you have a lot of data. Those markers are not good. Okay, so scatter with smooth lines will give you such a plot. Okay, but this plot does not have any labels, does not even have any uh, title. Okay, so how you can you can add labels to this plot? You'll go. When you click on your plot, you'll you'll have some tabs here, okay? Design, layout, and format. Okay, so go to the layout, and then <coughs> you'll you'll select your axis titles here, okay? So I'll choose the normal axis title, and then I'll say this one as X, and I'll say like for example, for say like the units of it was millimeter okay and then I'll go ahead again on axis titles and this one I will go to the vertical axis and then I'll choose one of the options here there, there are quite a lot of options here and then uh, I'll choose Y as the Y axis and let's say the unit is uh, what like again millimeters Okay. <clears throat> so this is how you can uh, you can add something. Uh, you can add uh, access labels to your to your plot. Uh, you can uh, you can have a chart title here. Okay. So like for example, I'll have uh, a title for for my plot like plot one okay and another important thing is how you can add some data to this for example uh, think about it like this that you want to have two plots in in one plot so for example uh, let's say that we want to have this plot as well in that plot okay so for inserting data actually in your plot you first click on your plot area the left click uh, sorry the right click and then select data here you will add some data let's say uh, <coughs> our data is data 2 okay the second data and then choose the values uh, in the x for the x axis like this and then click this one first delete this one and then choose the choose the data for the y-axis here and then <coughs> click this one and then OK and then another OK you'll have another plot here which is your data 2 the variations of data 2 the y variation is very small so you cannot see them okay <coughs> so that's how you can you can have two plots or even more than two plots three plots four plots uh, in in an X in one figure in one plot in Excel they are the most important things that you need to know so far and in in the next click clip um, I'm going to solve an example for the tension test <coughs>